Hey, 49er fans, I'm Thomas Mont. Welcome to Chat Sports. Today, we're getting into our 49ers free agency grades on every single one of their shockingly many signings over the past couple of days and weeks. First, though, like the video if you guys are happy with the 49ers free agency moves. I, obviously, I think everyone should be happy with this, so give the video a thumbs up. If you don't like the moves, I don't know what else to tell you, but if you do, give the video a thumbs up right now. All right, let's go ahead and jump into our grades. We'll start with the big fish, right? The big kahuna here, and that, of course, was Trent Williams. Now, my grade on this is a B plus, and I will explain why shortly, but let's get to the first part. The nitty-gritty of it, six-year deal, $138.06 million, making him the highest-paid left tackle in the National Football League, $55.1 million guaranteed. Imagine getting that paycheck and how much your life would change. Just saying right now. Okay, again, highest-paid tackle in the entire National Football League, highest-paid left tackle, I would say, and the only reason this is not a higher grade is because health is a little bit of a concern overall for Trent Williams. Not a massive concern, but it's a little bit of, of an overall concern. But I think kind of see maybe B plus might have been able to give this to an, an A minus, but it is a lot of money to go ahead and give to a guy who has not been able to start a lot of games all the way since like 2013. Has started 16 games since 2013. Again, we mentioned highest paid left tackle in the National Football League. That .01 gets him right above David Bakhtiari of, of course, the Green Bay Packers. But as you see, he makes a ton of money. And I think the majority of people are happy about this, but there are some out there who are upset that they gave him this much money, which, again, doesn't make any sense because of how great a left tackle we know that he is, and we know that he can be, we know that he will be going forward for San Francisco. The only reason this is not a higher grade, because the concerns out there, I guess, are somewhat legitimate, he must stay healthy. It's, it's, it's that simple. If Trent Williams stays healthy, this contract is worth it, and probably more so. If he doesn't stay healthy, then you obviously sit back and poo-poo the contract all you want. I know some counterparts out there, like a Grant Cohn, is very upset with them signing Trent Williams because of how much they're going to go ahead and have to pay him. I don't know if he'd rather them go ahead and draft somebody at number uh, 12 overall, but that, of course, means there is no longer a need for that. We mentioned it earlier. The reason why this is not a higher grade and why some people are upset about this because he has not started 16 games since 2013. Dealt with some hamstring problems last year and didn't stay on the football field for all 16 games. However, when on the football field, he's the best left tackle in the National Football League. And let's just be real here. What's one thing the Niners needed to greatly improve on based on what happened last year? That is, of course, continuity on the offensive line and just continuity on the entire team in general. Injuries were a big problem. Signing Trent Williams, keeping him in San Francisco, and obviously just hoping he stays healthy, which he most likely will, are big reasons why San Francisco should be one of the favorites going into the 2021 NFL season. Now, this also means, like we said earlier, there is no need to draft a left tackle. This completely just vacates and voids the idea of taking a Rayshon Slater, for instance, at number 12 overall in the 2021 April 29th first round of the NFL draft. This is, to me, good news because you can spend that draft pick on a bigger need, whether that's cornerback or spend that draft pick on a pass rusher or spend that draft pick on a trade up for a quarterback. Who knows? But people who want to get upset about Trent Williams, I think don't like the money and the cap hit, and I can understand that to a point. However, he's better than any left tackle coming out of the National Football League in the draft over the next couple of years, and he should be one of the top three to four left tackles in the National Football League over the next, what, three, four, five years? And if he stays healthy, which it's not like he's had major injuries, it's just more kind of banged up here, banged up there. So if he keeps on the uh, on the trend that he's been going, he'll play enough games to make this contract worth it. And I'll tell you one person who's very excited about this, whoever the third quarterback is in San Francisco. Right now, Jimmy Garoppolo, but potentially somebody else, Having an anchor and superstar at left tackle is good. Is really great news for them. So I am all for re-signing Trent Williams. I was surprised they were able to do it, but they were able to make the money work, and that is good news, I think, for all of us in San Francisco. Okay, pin comment down below. Which free agent signing do you guys like the most? Because honestly, like the Trent Williams one's the biggest one. Not my favorite one, though. We'll talk about the favorite ones here coming up in just a second. But first, again, give me your thoughts. Which free agent signing do you guys like the most down below? Pin comment. Right, let's move over to Kyle Juszczyk here, and this one surprisingly is being met with a lot of people who aren't happy with paying Kyle Juszczyk, which is strange. My grade for it, A-, minus, because this is an absolute no-brainer. This was the biggest duh move that you could have for the 49ers this offseason, and he was the most, honestly, to me, surefire free agent internal signing that they were going to go ahead and have. I was going to be shocked if they let Kyle Juszczyk walk. Turns out it was close, but no cigar. They go ahead and keep him on a five-year, $27 million deal. Now, he's expensive, yes, but he's also the best fullback by, like, a a long shot in the National Football League, and he played on 43% of offensive snaps last year. People want to say, oh, only 43% of offensive snaps. What do you mean only 43% of possible offensive snaps with a fullback in there? That means the 49ers are running the football a lot, and when they run the football,
football, they want to go ahead and have Kyle Juszczyk. I expect him to go ahead and be a massive factor in what should be a resurgent run game behind the healthy, or hopefully, running back core the 49ers have right now. Now, I get it. Again, he's high paid. I mean, he makes a lot more than the second best fullback, which you probably couldn't even name. That's Patrick Ricard out of Baltimore, $3.65 million. Then Derek Watt, so he's kind of the third best, I guess, highest paid uh, fullback in the National Football League. But this idea that they overpaid for Kyle Juszczyk, again, makes absolutely no sense. The Kyle Juszczyk haters just, 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 just need to chill. All right, just relax. I know you gave a fullback a dying position in the National Football League a lot of money, but what does Kyle Juszczyk do best? That, of course, is run blocking and being the lead blocker in a power eye or offset eye formation, and that is, of course, what the 49ers do more often than any team in the NFL. They want to be a run-first team. I know they, of course, you know, a lot of young wide receivers. They have a quarterback in Jimmy Garoppolo who can throw the football around. They have George Kittle, but at its core, this Kyle Shanahan offense is a run-first offense, and it is at its best when Kyle Juszczyk is in there. They were able to make the money work. He probably won't be here for the next five years, but they can, obviously, with the deal that they have. And I, again, am all for him going ahead and staying in San Francisco. And I say, screw the haters out there because they just need to relax and just enjoy the fact that they have one of the best run-blocking fullbacks, if not the best. Let's go ahead again. Best fullback in the NFL for a team that also uses the fullback more than the majority of teams in the NFL. All right, let's go to the one that was one of the first signings that they did. A little bit of a surprise. Not, not a massive surprise, but a little bit of a surprise. And that's, of course, Emmanuel Mosley being the first cornerback to go ahead and re-sign. The, the, the grade on this is a B-, and it's a B- minus because the potential is great, but the potential for it not turning out well is also great at the same time. Not a massive contract. It's a two-year deal worth up to $10.1 million, so they don't have to spend a ton of money on a free agent cornerback, and that, of course, alone is really good news. The good news also is that there's no guaranteed money after 2021, so cutting him after this year if he stinks is a very real possibility which of course you know provides a flexibility going into the 2022 season he's young he will compete for a starting spot i'm not going to go ahead and lock him in as a guaranteed starter although i think they paid him enough to where you can kind of assume mosey will go ahead and be the starter but at the 24 years of age i think is the big upside here where he can potentially grow into a much better cornerback and one that someone like richard sherman said can be a great cornerback in the national football league now now, one question here is, does this mean no cornerback at 12? Like, we're going to find out just how, how how confident they are in Emmanuel Mosley as a starter if they don't take a cornerback in the first round. If Patrick Sertan comes off the board and he's a 49er or Caleb Farley, that means it'll be an open competition and their, their, their trust in Mosley's not that great. But if they don't take a cornerback, they go elsewhere, then I think that that's a clear sign that they feel very confident in the D'Amico Ryan-led defense with one of the two starting cornerbacks being Emmanuel Mosley. Now... I would like to get your guys' thoughts on this. Who would you rather start at the second cornerback spot? Because Verrett, of course, resigned. He's coming up next. Type M down below for Mosley. Type C, or sorry, type D down below to draft a cornerback, which I think is still in play, but we're going to find out again just how important that is for them if they want to go ahead and spend the first round draft pick on uh, either a cornerback like Sertan or Farley. Now, while you're getting your questions in, don't miss out on any offseason coverage or your answers to the question down below. Don't miss out on any offseason coverage here on the 49ers Report. Make sure you guys are subscribed as we, of course, are, are still looking for more moves. I don't know if they will make any, but if they do, we'll have it covered here in a draft. I mean, it's, pro days are happening. The draft is coming up. We'll have great coverage here on the 49ers report. Mentioned earlier, the counterpart at cornerback who just re-signed a couple of days ago is Jason Verrett. The grade on this one is an A-. Is, is, is an a minus. It's fantastic. I think re-signing Jason Verrett was a no-brainer. He was the lead cornerback I wanted them to sign all along, and they get him at a pretty good deal, right? One year, six and a half million dollars, and it's kind of a it's a combination of a prove-it deal, because it's not a massive long-term deal, but also a, hey, great work in 2020, here's some money, right? He's going to get $6.5 million at most going into the next season. He was the eighth highest-ranked cornerback according to Pro Football, Pro Football Focus in 2020, which shows just how far he has come from being what was presumed to be a, a bust because of the injuries to now being a starting cornerback in the NFL. He will be the number one cornerback going into training camp. And again, the only way he loses this job is if they draft somebody at number 12. And then they, I guess, like Mosley and, let's say, Caleb Farley or Patrick Sartan over Verrett. But the way they paid him shows that he is clearly going to go to be, go ahead and be cornerback number one. In terms of his pro football focus grades for 2020, fantastic, right? Eighth out of 121 possible cornerbacks. He was also top 15 in run defense and top 15 in coverage as well. 
the versatility of Jason Verrett is fantastic. And again, health is a big thing. He stayed healthy last year. If he can stay healthy in 2021, more good things to come. He might even get another contract from San Francisco going into next offseason. As I mentioned, like, right, all he has to do is stay healthy. If he does that, he will be the cornerback. He will be the number one cornerback. I think he will have a very good year. And like I just said, he'll probably get re-signed, if not by San Francisco, by somebody else for another big contract. This one most likely, unlike this unlike this year's, next year's would be one that have multiple years in it to go ahead and lock him up for the long term. Again, Barrett, Mosley are your starters. It's going to be very, very interesting to see who's going to go ahead and be that slot cornerback at the time of filming this. They have not re-signed Kwan Williams. I know there are reports out there saying they're trying to, which I would be all for, you know, how much I like me some Kwan Williams, but at the point, they have not re-signed him, and so there will be... Uh, some, some question marks in terms of who's going to play the slot. I mean, is Ken Webster going to do that? I don't really know. But keep an eye out for some more moves, whether now or in the draft, to figure out the slot cornerback because the outside presumably is taken care of. Inside, not so much. Now, again, Verrett getting a deal to me is just good news all around. Give the video a thumbs up. Just go ahead and congratulate Jason Verrett on staying healthy, having a breakout year, being potential comeback player of the year, and just getting another contract. Six and a half million dollars, big time money. Thumbs up right now for Verrett. All right, they went ahead and signed a pass rusher, which is interesting, and I didn't get to react to this whenever it happened. Samson uh, Ebucom, is how you say his last name, right? Ebucam, Ebucom. Samson Ebucom gets a two-year, $12 million deal. I'm not sold on this. I'm, I'm, I'm a C-plus on this because $12 million, I know a lot of that is incentive, so it's not guaranteed he's going to get all $12 million, but it's a lot for somebody who is considered a project for the 49ers. He came into the league trying to be a sack artist. He had all the different tr tools and traits, and he's really quick off the offense or, or off of the snap. Bends really well against left tackles, but just not a lot of production during his time in Los Angeles. I think the hope here is you put him on a defensive line alongside Nick Bosa and Eric Armstead, and he gets a lot of one-on-one -on -one chances to become the sack artist he was reportedly supposed to become out of the draft. 14 games last year on our equally as good defensive line alongside Aaron Donald, Ebucam had uh, Ebucom, excuse me, had, what, four and a half sacks? Like, just, just not that great for someone who got essentially $6 million per year. Again, a project here. You put him alongside Bosa, DJ Jones, Kinlaw, and Armstead, and you expect him to go in and get an, an unlimited supply of one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and maybe he makes the most of them. But I was a little bit curious on this deal because he's, again, a guy who just has had plenty of chances to perform and hasn't done so as much, and so I hope the project works out well for the 49ers, but a little bit on the expensive side. Okay, before we keep going, we are into the Sweet 16 of the March Madness Tournament, and so if you guys want to get your bets in on any of the games coming up this Friday and Saturday, do it with our friends at BetUS for an insane deposit bonus if you are a first-time signer-upper, and eh, signer-upper, right? First-time signing up, you go to chatsports.com forward slash 49bet, put $100 down, use that promo code NINERS125, you get a 125% deposit bonus on that $100, meaning you get $225 to bet I would say bet on Baylor versus Nova because I got a big bet on Baylor right now, and they looked really good in their first two round matchups. Can't bet on Oklahoma. They're they're gone. They got waxed by Gonzaga, but plenty of other opportunities here. The Sweet 16 is upon us, so get your bets in. Also bet on the NBA, the NHL, and you got obviously the MLB right around the corner. So all of this stuff can be bet on with our friends at BetUS. If you have any questions or we want help setting up your BetUS account, email us, 49ers at chatsports.com. All right, a couple more signings here. Let's get to what is my favorite, right? This is my favorite free agent signing. It's Alex Mack. I mean, I'm giving an A-plus on Alex Mack. The only A-plus I'm going to go ahead and hand out. It's a very team-friendly three-year, $14.85 million deal. And he fills a need that uh, obviously was was extremely important when Western Richburg continues to have injury issues. And he becomes a leader on this offensive line and hopefully adds some stability as well for a group that just wasn't what it should have been this past year, obviously with the quarterback issues and not being able to run the football and all those sorts of other issues that we talked about. But I think Mac is going to go ahead and create a lot of uh, a lot of plus side for this offensive line. I mentioned. He is my uh, he is my favorite addition, like 100%. He is my favorite addition here in terms of uh, overall what the 49ers did this offseason. I think they did a lot of great things. But he comes in here as a great leader formerly of the Falcons. He's worked with Kyle Shanahan, had his best year in 2016. And he's been a guy who, before this year, played in like every single game except for one or two games back in 2015. Like the guy has been healthy and very, very crazy healthy. He had a concussion in Atlanta this year. Of course, that's going to knock anybody out. But a big fan of this. The 49ers offensive line should be a top five offensive line. Honestly, I think right now the 49ers offensive line will be top five, minimum top 10 in the NFL. And a big part of that is not only resetting Trent Williams, but the addition of Alex Mack. Okay. 
I want to get to the final two, or, or should I say, yeah, the final two that happened just the past couple of days. The first of which is Jaquiski Tart. This one is, to me, good news. It's a B plus because he's going to be the starting safety opposite of Jimmy Ward. It's a one-year deal. They've not given us official details on this one, but he's a big part of that secondary the past couple of years, especially in 2019 during the Super Bowl run. The issue is, of course, injuries. He's missed 36 of the last 64 games of the past four seasons. However, they were, uh, you know, at least consistent when he was in there, and if he can stay healthy alongside War. I think the secondary is shaping up to be a lot better than it was back even as early as, 20, as 2019. I think the secondary can have the best year we've seen over the past couple of years. Only seven games in 2020. Again, if he can stay healthy, big if. That's a huge signing for the 49ers. But my guess is the one-year deal is not that expensive. Again, no details. But it looks like it's going to be a team-friendly deal to get him back in with the group, and it's just nice to see the 49ers bringing back some of their guys to create, again, some 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 consistency there on the backside of this 49er defense. Final signing here, we'll go quickly. It's Tavon Wilson. This was kind of a surprise. It came before Tart, so you're kind of wondering, is he going to compete for the starting spot of that, that, that Tart's going to leave behind? So I gave it a C-, minus, but then, of course, they went ahead and re-signed Tart, so it's like, I guess this is clearly depth in the 49ers secondary because Tart only played in seven games last year and has missed almost half of his games, over half of his games, over the past four years. Special teams value, so he's going to for sure be out there for kick coverage and punt coverage, so he adds depth where you need it, but not necessarily a guy who you go, oh yeah, he can definitely push Tart for the starting job, just not what we've seen over the past couple of seasons, but he's been healthier, played in 15 games last season, then of course Tart 7, and so that's a real possibility in terms of uh, the secondary and safety spot. You can see how they're trying to build right now with the secondary is re-sign their guys, add a little bit of depth. That way, in case you have another season like last season where injuries become a real problem, you have better backups than what they had in 2020. And so I like the addition of Tavon Wilson, but was just a little bit surprised that they that they needed to add him behind Tart because I think the opportunity and the hope here is that Tart turns out to be healthy 100%. All right, that's it. I mean, that's all the moves they made. It's a lot of moves overall. It's impressive what they were able to do. Give me your grades on the 49ers free agency moves, A, B, C, D, or F. I want to see what those comments are down below and see how people are feeling about our 49ers going into this offseason. Honestly, my grade, A+. Plus. I think they did, they, they did a great job. They were able to uh, use their money wisely, and they got a lot more players than we thought that they could, including the big fish, which was Trent Williams, the addition of Alex Mack, Ebucom. I mean, they did a really good job this offseason. I give it an A+. Plus. Ultimately, I'm for today here on the 49ers Report. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Plenty more to come in the coming days and weeks. For Chat Sports, I'm Thomas Montz, signing off for the rest of your day.